I, I, I did time. that shit. Put the pot. Because you know, nigga, you are one of them niggas in CT, right? You are one of them niggas, my nigga. Yeah. When, especially in this whole music scene, you are one of them niggas. That's a fact. Nobody can discredit you from mm-hmm. that. You put your work in for this. You work the trenches. You put your you put your foot in for everything that you needed to be where you're at right now, and it mm-hmm. fucking paid off. Yeah. So that's I why we're saying no humbleness, my nigga, because you did all the legwork everybody wishes they can do, wants to do, or trying to do, and you actually made it successful and made something out of it. Mm-hmm. That's what stands out in Connecticut right now is who is bringing success with what they're doing. Because mm-hmm. everybody's yeah. trying to do something. Exactly. Everybody's trying to do something, but who are actually benefiting from what they're doing? Are yeah. you just are you just capitalizing around with your homies, you know? Yeah. Are white people fucking with your shit? And you just <laughs> <me too>. facts. <laughs> That's what it all boils down to, because you know when white people Can't are fucking maneuver, with your yeah. shit, you know that's when you global, you know that's yeah. when you hitting different shit. That's why Nicki Minaj switched up her style. That's why a lot of people switch their style up when they hit a certain pinnacle of their career. Because if you want to sell out certain crowds and certain arenas, you have to cater to the people who are actually buying tickets. Right. And that's what it all boils down to. And then we, that, yeah. I didn't, that was the hell of an intro. That was a hell of an intro. I didn't roll up yet. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't, I, didn't, I, didn't, I was a little rant. <laughs> That was a little rant. Hey, in your own right. Nah, but it's facts, though. Yeah. I, I definitely would just want to... Like I said, I'm going to know if you're being humble or not, man. I'm going to know if you're being humble. Yeah. I think Connecticut is doing really... I, everybody we've been meeting, yo, proves that Connecticut is doing amazing things. Yeah. In their exactly. own fucking we way. Build, we're building our own market. Man. In their own fucking way, man. Because... There's mm-hmm. a different energy right now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We've met mm-hmm. people who... I've known who we don't stay. even like their music, you know, or don't like the art that they do, but... When you meet them and see the work that they're putting in, the team that they lined up for themselves, and just mm-hmm. the opportunities that's just waiting for them to grab, it's like, oh shit! Yeah, it's like, oh shit, you're working. Oh, it's like you're working. Okay, mm-hmm. it's paying off. Like even if you don't, we've learned you don't have to fuck with the thing that everybody's producing. Yeah, it's all about the person behind mm-hmm. everything that you're doing. Exactly. Who are you? Why? Sh- why should we even fuck with it? Mm-hmm. That's what it matters to us, and that's what we're here for. We want to tell that people, means. you fuck with it because this nigga is like this, and he deserves to be out the hood as much as everybody else as well, too, because we're all trying to make it. And once I make it, I can put other people on. That's exactly. how it goes. That's, that's a how, fact. That's, that's, and that's how everybody looking at it, like, that on the outside, and then they, they looking at just, like, what they doing, like, as Facts. a whole, not just yeah. what that one person do. They looking at everybody, like, Facts. is they going to help put on their people? Is they uh-huh. going to... Like, what's the real network going on? Right? Facts. Yeah. And, and, but there's a lot of that going on right yeah. now. Real, a lot of real genuine networking going on. Mm-hmm. That's, what, that's, that's, what, that's big facts. Big facts. <laughs> I, just think, I just think we need our own market, man. Fuck it. And we, <clears throat> I think it's getting We there. have it. Yeah. It's just it's there. We well, have the to thing, the expose problem is, it more. I think people have to realize that they have their own sounds and stick with it and stop trying to chase the industry mm-hmm. and it's for them Hell it's yeah. for the people around in the city to also realize that we have stars Facts. as well mm-hmm. yeah. once what? that happened which it is starting to more because i'm i'm seeing everybody getting their own little fan bases up and yeah. it's, it's starting to, it's starting to yeah. grow more and so, one of the things i i noticed maybe it's just a general thing but it's like um the most support you're gonna get is from the other creators mm-hmm but you can also like, get the most critique from other creators too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but that that but that's get, help you grow. It starts with but that, but yeah, it helps you, you grow. When you so to be a real artist, you have to know how to cater to real people. Yeah, got yeah. yeah, people that's not doing music. Facts. Mm-hmm. 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 Facts. It's like a basketball <clears throat> player trying to tell how an NBA player did a player how he could have did a better. It's like nigga, you ain't even in the pros. You don't know how that level of competition is, yeah. and that's where you gotta connect with the people, man. But and then I feel like that's part of the separation with us too because there's different levels of where everybody's at right now mm-hmm. not everybody's on the same level and everybody's say everybody's doing the same thing but everybody's at different steps way yeah, you know everybody on their own, exactly on their own some people been doing it for years but they're more locally known and then they're known somebody else somewhere else and then there's yeah. people who's been doing it for years and they have that that's that star studdedness that's there but it's still something that's still missing for them you know yeah, yeah. and i feel like Connecticut is too busy trying to find out what's missing instead of focusing on what's actually here. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. That's a, yeah. You, you just hit it on the nail too, because it's everybody. It's it's somebody here for whatever you need. 
Mm. You just got to It really is. And that's yep. more than, that's at least two people you here for be, something you, you need. You can't <laughs> not speak up. Like, you can't be too cool. It's, that's the other thing. Dudes be too cool about no shit. To support local people. Yeah. Because they rather buy the Fenty. They rather buy them big, ooh, big tons of nice And they stuff. just don't know. A lot of people just really don't know what yeah. to do. True. They want to be told. I'm one, that's because they lie. be too cool trying to. Like, I'm, gonna just do what I'm, doing right I'm one of those people. Bro, ask questions, man. Like you, know, is, you people are embarrassed know, to ask questions. You never know everything man. because people like it's to call down the dumb question thing. Mm -hmm. It's like, what? Well, there's no such thing as this. I mean, there is dumb questions depending on the situation of that question is being asked. But most of the times, I'd rather you ask a dumb question than not question anything. Yeah, you have to ask. Like you know, not every question is going to be, be smart, smart anyway. Not smart. You know what? Like, not everybody's gonna have an intelligent question because sometimes you're. Are, can, can questions actually be smart questions? Yeah, hey, what is this intelligent question? What is this? Like, can question? you actually have a smart question? Because at the end of the day, asking questions is something, a lack of knowledge. I think, I think that pertains to something that you really were missing or you really. Yeah, you like attention. something click. That's what makes yeah. something click. That's what makes that smart question a smart question. I feel okay, like okay. something that you like, wait, I wasn't thinking about that. You're right. Or something like that, but that's that take that takes for people to have an open mind and be willing to listen. Mm -hmm. Open mind, people that exists nowadays. I, I think the only thing I think the only time people want to be open minded is when sex is involved. <laughs> I'm being dead. I'm not even trying to make a joke right now, and yeah. I love sex jokes. You I know, love funny sex though, jokes. That's actually good observation. The though. world is just is just traumatized right now. Yo, the world is sad <laughs> and depressed. Yeah. Don't forget depressed. I think the world is very depressed. Look at the music. Hey, matter of fact, like, look at the music that's being the made. Music like, is the music is depressing. And it's depressing, yo. Mm -hmm. I like, <clears throat> I never used to listen to certain types of music and certain types of artists, but then I started like opening my mindset to a whole different the fact that you can't judge people of how they present their art. You have to at least, you know, you at least have to at least take mm -hmm. a chance at it. You can't tell, so you can't tell shit is shit until you smell it. Yeah. That, that's how it is for me. So, once I started listening to some of these people, I started listening to the words. I'm like, yo, these artists are depressed as fuck. Mm -hmm. And then the other thought that come to my head is, nigga, they're only like 21. Mm -hmm. Yeah, motherfucker be sad as shit. Yes. Yeah. 20 years old, bro. Like, and to me, 20 is a baby. Drugs, like, like, I get why 30-year-olds is calling me a baby when I was 22, 23. Yo, I get it. Yeah. Because mentally, as much as you think you know, you know everything, shit. Yeah. you don't know shit. I, I don't feel like... I feel That's like why I feel like it's always good to like for people to know their history and look it back into stuff. Because once you know your history, you know what's you know what's coming, and you won't get surprised and get right. overwhelmed. And start doing, feel you know I me? Mean? Like they being depressed and end up doing right. drugs and all those other shit. Repeating the over. same steps that other people repeated. Yeah. And that's why you gotta read as well too. Because if you read books, like I read this one book, it was all about because. Um, this is when I was having my my anxiety attacks and like being by myself would start triggering me being in my head a lot and mm -hmm. I start overthinking I start my heartbeat would start racing just because I get so deep into these thoughts and most of these thoughts are really just these uncontrolled out extraordinary scenarios that didn't have a high likelihood of actually even happening mm -hmm. so I started reading this book and there's this one sentence that stood out to me up to this day and it's like most of the things that you are scared about are not even gonna happen Mm. Yeah, facts. It's, What's the book? It's not like it's called. I have it somewhere. It's called um, thinking something. I have it here. It's actually in here, so I know where it's at. Mm. But it's called um, like minding your mind in your mind or thinking. It's just finding ways how to control your anxiety and how to work through your thoughts. Because I'm at a point where it's like fear and all these type of things. Mm -hmm. It's only gonna exist if you allow it to exist. If you That's believe true. in it. Because, like honestly, most things is only real when you believe in it. As mm. cliche and as dumb as it might come off to certain people, it's yo that has so much weight to it. A lot of uh, things. Yeah. Do out of mind, out of sight, out of sight, out of mind. It's it's fucking true. Yeah. If you really don't believe in something, it, you're gonna be unaware of it, and it's not gonna be real to you, even if it's actually real. You watch too many movies, too, man. I actually that, that don't. Also, you no, know I'm saying people. Oh, people, yes, people do, yeah. yes. That, that instills a lot of fear. Yes, yeah, yeah. and play video games. Video games desensitize News. us. The news, news is oh, just meant to throw us off as well too. Yeah, that's good. I like this talk right here. Let's get this show started. It's deep. Let's get into it. <laughs> I love, I actually, we can have. It's funny. We, our last conspiracy <laughs> conversation was with Future. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I bet. Honestly, I'll we'll be I, on I, it too. We, 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 let's let him. You know, he be going live, hey, nigga, <laughs> for the Wake and Bake show. Yeah. That's all we had to have him up here for the Wake. Lie. Future, my guy. Yo. I love Future yeah, from when yeah. he was made. What was the song? Um, um, spiritual warfare. 
Mm. That was my song, first one song from Future. Ever mm -hmm. since then, I've been a fan of Homeo. So I like Future. Because okay. I like people who get me in that artistic, e eccentric way. You know, people who are not ordinary what they're thinking people who are not afraid to in a sense go against the grain which is the actual name of my company that i llc is at grain which is short for against the grain mm -hmm. so i like people who push the envelope who really don't care what society is because i was having mm -hmm. a conversation with um uh nbs um malay and we was talking about who sets the standards for these things you know why do people say oh that's not the way to do this oh you got to do it this way who the fuck cares the social media and the media man. yeah it's like why is there standard that's the biggest for tool against the people that's i don't like you that. believe in it though yeah no nah, but this is when it's like when i was first putting out my first book and i was like reading up layer you have there's a layout for books to be successful or there's a certain way and it's like Nigga, I just wanted to create a book so people can read my thoughts, you know? Mm -hmm. You know, why do I have to put it together a certain way for you to even take a look at the fucking book? Yeah. Why? Because it don't meet the standards of certain shit. <laughs> that don't make no sense to me. Like, why is there standards for certain things, especially when it comes to art? There's no standards for art, and that's like, why it's art. Like the people outside the culture build this thing. Yes! You gotta stop letting that happen. For what? They don't, they're not even inside to understand the struggle, the tears, the blood, the frustrations, the anger that goes into anything that makes them just feel good for five minutes or less. You nice. really feel, you really feel this one. No, nah, yo, I've been a creator <laughs> for my whole life, yo. Like, like you know this, I've been, I've been creating my whole sure. life, yo. Me too. And it's like, yeah, it's a frustration when people Man just they don't understand like like when you print you put time into something you present to them the first thought they have is oh i would have did this oh mm -hmm. you, th it could have been sounded better if it came out this way and it's like nigga at least tell me what you liked about it first yeah, yeah. you don't know what i did into put in this shit my nigga i right. put a lot of work just to bring it to life you just shot it down with that condescending half-ass compliment, and I know condescending compliments. <laughs> I give them a lot, so I know them. Nah, I know what you mean. Yeah. So that's my whole thing when it comes to being a creator and being from, and from a fan perspective. Like I can be a great fan just because I'm a great creator myself. I know how to just let people be in their field, you know, let them do their thing. I know how to give compliments where it's more for feedback or critique, but not in a way to tear it down or build it up. Because I know what people put into their art money. It's mm -hmm. special to them. Yeah, very special. All right, <laughs> let's go. And with that said, <laughs> welcome to Weed and Whiskey Podcast with your two favorite people. My name is O'Shane, and you know that by now. And we're here with Quell, you know Yo. that by now. And we are in the building with a motherfucking celebrity. A legend. A legend. A CT legend and a soon-to-be worldwide legend. Mm -hmm. This man has put his stamp on so much fucking shit. You know what the crazy part is? I've been waiting to say this. I want to say this very excitedly. Y'all hear all them artists we had on here? This man produced pretty much 90% of them. And they've mm -hmm. all said it. That's the crazy part <laughs> that's about the, this. Your that name came up part. multiple times on this podcast. I think every artist... Our work speaks for itself. I think man. every artist that we've had, maybe besides maybe one or two. Spade okay. just talked about you. Yeah. Spade brought you Literally up. Literally just yeah. talked about And you just that's did something with Fuego cool. Bass. You just dropped it um, off to a single with Fuego Bass. Right. So... Every artist and every artist we're probably going to have going forward has worked with you in some way, shape, or form. Mm -hmm. This is what makes that whole full circle idea beautiful is because when that circle is forming, you don't even see it. Yeah. And then when it meets, it's like, oh, shit. Yeah. It just clicks. Yeah. You know? Because it's like what we were talking about. Everything just molds itself and, mm -hmm. and happens the way... You don't always have it. You have intentions of certain things, but just because you want something and have high intentions of certain things going a certain way, mm -hmm. don't mean it's going to. Don't mean it's meant to. And that's not a bad thing. Because mm -hmm. look where we at. We were able to have Ty Nitty, aka 2 4, in the building. You can say Ooh. aka. No, Ooh. I'm going to just say that because, <laughs> yes. No, matter of fact. 2-4, a.k.a. All used to be known as Tiny. Formerly known as. Formerly yeah. known as. Yeah. As Tiny. I just wanted to say that because we had this conversation is because a lot of people don't put the the connection that <laughs> yeah, Tiny Nitty is 2-4 and 2-4 right. is Tiny Because right, right, right. like I said, um, when like when I first heard of 2-4, I'm like, 
Who's two four? Like, <laughs> you know, where this nigga come from? Like, why you? Who? How did you end up working with some of these niggas so quick? Like, yeah. this nigga just came up out of nowhere, you know. And the way you spelled the name, it's like, what the fuck? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> nigga dropping some, tapes, all of these shit. shit. Working with a lot of these artists that we're friends and shit. And I was like, who the fuck is this nigga? Mm-hmm. Come to find out, you know. Shout out to um, I support CT. Go check that episode out. Mm-hmm. She just said, you know, how two four is tight nitty. I'm like, what the fuck? Are you serious? Mm-hmm. That's what happened. That's how this nigga came up out of nowhere. This nigga just wanted to... Why did you change your name? Where the fuck did... Why did... How did 2-4 born? What was the birth of 2-4, you know? Was it something that was in the process of happening? Or did you just yeah, wake up one day and just be like, I don't want to be Ty Nitty no more. Don't no, fuck that nigga right what now. What was the frustrations with Ty Nitty? I still, I still, I still rock with the name Ty Nitty. Like, all my like close people still call me Ty or Ty Nitty mm. or Nitty. You know, from time to time, but for me, <clears throat> for one, it was a thing with. For one, shout out to Queensbridge. Shout out to Ty Nitty from Mob Deep. You feel me? That's his name. You feel me? That's mm-hmm. really yeah. that's originally. Oh, because he came retired. From. Honestly, my people's from back when, back in the day. Like for me, when I was in like middle school, high school, and shit, like they the ones that started calling me Ty Nitty. We, all we used to listen to back then was Queensbridge and yeah, all of that yeah, coming yeah. up. So. It was like, yeah, let me call you Ty Nitty. For me, it just came up randomly, so I just ran with it. But um, the two four like literally was just. I feel like it was just more of a conscious thing, like just awakening and like just understanding. Like, listen, this is what I do. This is my, music is me. Music is my life, and this is what I do twenty four hours a day, seven days a week. Two four. Two four. You feel know me? Uh, so I was just like, you know what. Two, two four. four. Oh shit! Mm-hmm. That's fucking as simple as that. Was it when yeah, you started your, yeah. your your um, spiritual journey? A journey um, of I was you? getting more into starting to learning other stuff, but get, like once I I look the name was more so like me. Like I always loved number. Like I always had a favorite number. Like that was my favorite. Two twenty four. And um, once I started learning more about numerology and stuff, I started mm. realizing, like, oh, it kind of like has there's a, a reason why he's attracted like, to that number. Yeah, it's because it's six. Yeah, six is a is a um a, a number um what's it? Is it no seven's creation, right? I think seven is yeah. The yeah, seven is cre- creation. Seven is completion. Yeah. yeah, I forgot which one six was. Six was for knowledge or a, yeah. a, a, a higher self. Because we're 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 being taught to be scared of the number six. Yeah, that's that's one thing for sure. Um. For me, when I looked into it, it was like the number two and number two and number four, like generally was like saying like more so like you on the road to doing your purpose and mm. and, and um sticking to what really matters, you know. Like, mm. Okay. You know, so that's basically where I, where I well maybe really stick with. I'm like, yeah, yeah, okay. So it really is some meaning to it once I started mm. really looking into it. Mm. Is there something mm. on your journey that triggered that? All right, I was meant to be. I was meant to do music. Is there a point that since recently was triggered a, it? Since I was since I was little, man. Like that's I grew up watching all of the old '90s videos. Like I used to record. I used to I used to make my own videos back in the day. Like. My mama tell you herself, like, <laughs> I was, like, fucking three, two years old, I was recording videos, Tupac, fucking Wu-Tang, everybody. Like, <laughs> Lip singing them shits. <laughs> exactly. They thought I was going to be I DJ know, because I, I used to do them shits, too. Bro. Right, right, right. <laughs> I was yeah, in the crib watching videos all day. That's all it was. It's 24-7. Hip-hop, R&B. But you should record it, right? You didn't stop it, right? No. Okay. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, uh-huh. I don't know. I'm just making sure because I I'm, I be paranoid. I want to know. I just be worrying about technical shit a lot. Make mm-hmm. sure I get smooth shit because you know it's not great having great content if it's not captured right. Facts. Mm-hmm. Hey, so yeah, so um, where was I going with this shit? I, I don't shit? I have you, no clue. Yeah, mm-hmm. take over real quick while well, yeah. I catch my thoughts. Okay, all right. First question I'm keeping weak, right? right? <laughs> <laughs> the liquor. Oh, the liquor. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> First thing I need to ask, right? How did you get the J Stone place? J Stone. So, I would say like basically, once the um, it was like literally like, not too long after I had got the placement with um, with Banks. Mm-hmm. Um, his people was reaching out. Um, I wasn't sure who it was because I, I didn't know. You know who Jay it Stone wasn't Jay was? Stone. It wasn't Jay Stone. It was his people. My, shout out to my boy Prosper. Mm-hmm. Um, he 
was the first person to reach out me out to me. But I was, you know, yeah, on the like, internet, you don't know who people be for yeah, real. They be talking shit, capping. You know, but like the young kids like to say, feel me? He was like, yo, yeah, get you in touch with um, Nipsey and all money in. Me? Reach out to me. He sent me his number. And then this is like like in 2013, I think. Yeah, about 20, 2013. Oh, and so this was early. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn. Yeah. This is like. This is this is Crenshaw. Yeah. This no. This is before, right before that actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, right, it's like right, right yeah, before yeah, that because yeah, okay, um, okay. he was just getting out. Jay Stone just got had got out, and if you listen to some of Nipsey's songs, yeah, 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 talking about him, yeah. some, but um, Prosper, I had hit him up. And he was like, yeah, man. I mean, get you into I'm getting, trying to get you into all oh, money. Yeah, man. I see what you did with Banks. That shit was crazy. Feel me? You got to tell him, man. We got to get him on track again. Boom, boom. And I'm like, word, word. You feel me? But then he had put me online with Jay Stone. I'm like, he like, yeah, we got to get some joints in. And I'm like, say that. We're going to get it in. And then from there, I would just start sending joints and He started sending shit back immediately. Like, oh, he was shit. on okay. into it. Like, okay, that's yeah. fire, yo. I actually, you know what's crazy thing. about that? I actually sent him one of the beats I sent Banks before. And he ended up using that shit. Bro? <laughs> yeah, that was one of the tracks he did. It's called P Press Play. Press Play? Okay, mm -hmm. Press Play. Anybody go stream that Press Play. I haven't yeah. heard that yet. Jay Stone, Press Play. Go, go stream that. That's I've been having um, big trouble. It's been big trouble for me to realize that I'm never going to get another Nipsey thing. So. Oh yeah, he's a huge Nipsey fan. Like yeah, I'm a yeah, big fan. Nipsey yeah. too. So um, I want to talk a little bit more local as well too. Like uh, like I don't know. Like I've been, I've always had my ears along with a lot of things. And um, like to me, one of your major path is like even with your accreditation as well too. Is like your journey with annoyed. That like yeah. to me, that was I don't know. From the outside and just hearing your story of how you find yourself, like even on this, I feel like that was a big starting point to finding you and mm -hmm. your journey as well too. Mm -hmm. Cause it's like, to me, honestly, yo, when you don't really start finding yourself until you start finding success, mm -hmm. because anytime we're like in a sense broke, we're kind of as a self broken too, you know. And then when you're broken, you can't be your best you because you're always trying to thing. find ways to fix yourself. Yeah. Yeah. So until you become successful, you don't have to worry about fixing yourself, and you can <clears> literally <throat> just focus on, you know, problems at life, not just problems of self and your internal shit. You know, other than that, when you can just focus on it, you have better chances of just finding yourself. Yeah. Like even when you're speaking right now, I just started thinking about. Jim Carrey and a lot of videos I've been watching and mm -hmm. how you talked about how you don't want to be um, Ty Nitty no more. You want to be 2-4. And to me, it just talked about how he had an interview and he's talking about he feels like even being Jim Carrey, that's a character he's playing. The straw man. Yes. Mm -hmm. it, yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, Jim, Jim Carrey, he's deep. He deep. He's real deep. I mean, it, it, the, 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 persona, the idea of the persona and then the, the face that you give to society, most of the times, it's a character that you're playing as well, too. Oh, yeah. yeah. And he said most of the time when you feel like you can't find yourself or you're not being yourself, he said that's the perfect time to feel like that because you're not. You're never most of the time being yourself. You're not being who you're meant to be. Mm -hmm. So I feel like society taints what we think we want to be. Yeah, exactly. So I always say, like again, the media and what we put in front of our eyes is is always the problem half the time. Do you watch TV? Yeah, we uh, yeah. Not I, I don't watch it like I used to, but we all fall into that, you know. Yeah. Do you consider streaming <laughs> watching TV? Like if I'm watching Netflix, is that watching TV? It's the same thing. What yeah. if I'm not watching it on a TV? Like so I'm watching man. it on my laptop or my phone. It's my watching media, TV? man. It's the it's media. Still, it's, it's media. It's the same way. But to me, t the, TV the way is the, I, the, the way way I do it now. I always try to like find what's really going on instead of like getting focusing on what the bullshit is. Because you have to I, dive into it at I'm some not point. Hold you after I used to try to do that shit. I'm all about the bullshit now. I watch <laughs> all the movies. I watch all the TV shows, the ha ha's, and all that shit as distraction. No, I watch the shit with the hidden thing. messages. Like, mm. I'm a huge Marvel fan. I think Marvel has a lot of fucking hidden mess. Very a lot of people a might lot. look at me crazy for a saying lot. this, but I feel like Marvel tells history better than our history books. Facts. I'm being honest, bro. If you know how to read between the yes. lines. Like if we, or, or if, if our history in tune, books will start in the beginning of the fucking history book like I used to say in high school. I mean, what's the beginning of the history for you? 
When uh-huh. you say the beginning of history, does it talk about before slavery? No, I'm talking about American history because they used to try to skip that shit in the beginning of the American book. American history and they, they used to have that real. shit. They used to have the slave shit in the beginning of the book and they never used to talk about it. And yeah. they used to point that shit out every time in class. They were like, Yo, why y'all not talking about this shit? <laughs> oh, because we'll they get to it. I feel Fuck like, I feel like America it. wants you to remember 9 11, but they want you to forget slavery. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, I don't oh, like yeah. that. I don't like that. Why? Yeah. They always forces you. To remind you, like, we always do everything for 9-11, you know, set up these memorials. There's always these good connotations to it. But when anytime somebody bring up slavery to somebody who's not a descendant of somebody who was enslaved, then it's like a big thing. Like, oh, no, we're not that no more. You know, we're not I my think, ancestor. You know, nah, I didn't do that to you. And it's like... I'm going to play devil's advocate on that one. There's a lot. I'm, I'm they they ain't telling us. That's right. why. I think it's just because we remember that shit. I think it's... Because I remember that day. <laughs> that shit was a different day here like bro i feel like it was not it what's was being taught in white families is, is different from it's different and it's what makes them see society the way they see society like i remember having a conversation with this white girl anybody who live in connecticut or no connecticut um, she lived in avon Ooh. and you know avon is not far from hartford at all uh, i'll be there on, yeah exactly <laughs> no matter how far avon you go it's still adjacent to fucking hartford so so i had a conversation i think this is around the mike brown Scenario, the, the whole um, mm-hmm. all of that was happening, right? It's still happening. Yeah, happening exactly. But this mm-hmm. is one that specific one was happening, and I was telling her how other things outside that was happening in in our state and locally. Mm-hmm. And her response, I will never forget this. Is like, really? I don't see it. <laughs> and in my head, I'm like, how? There's no way you can even turn on the news and not see it. They but watch the news. that's when I realized, bro. Even when they see it, they don't see it. And if they do see it, it just scares them not to even want to be bothered with it. Because mm. to them, it's not their life. Yeah, what are they gonna it's do not their it? reality. Yeah. It's like, oh, oh my God, he went through that. I'm glad mm-hmm. I don't have to go through that. Oh, oh my God, that's crazy. I'm glad, you know, none of my bre- none of my black friends went through that. Mm-hmm. That's that's how they're looking at it. It's just like, but and, the thing is, though, like, they being played just like we being played by the same people. By the same people. Mm-hmm. But to me, and to me, sometimes some of those same but, people are being taught to pretend to not see it as well too mm-hmm. because they know once you start seeing it or acknowledging that you're seeing it that's when your family or you know you're mm-hmm. you're, you're putting the family in jeopardy at that point yeah because now the family has ties to that racial history your team your family's in the position where it's at because of that so yeah. i feel like even though they're, they're 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 taught to tell that they don't see it because it's going to expose the fact that they're benefiting off it mm-hmm and I think that's where a lot of it boiled down. A lot of it don't want to admit it that they're actually benefiting off it directly or indirectly. Yeah. They're running off fear, man. And then once you once you admit it, then you actually have to have the conversation. Mm-hmm. You have to have that conversation that's at that point. The conversation's coming up. People just keep trying to throw stuff in our way to avoid it or make us not see it. Like making Juneteenth a holiday? Yeah, that's... that's that's another distraction, you know? But how you feel about Juneteenth being a holiday? Do you feel like it's one of those, finally, or it's like, wow, really? <laughs> it's just another slap in the face. Because to me, it's like having um, Black History Month. Yeah. yeah well, why they press the... Because um... right now, right now, if, like, people don't understand, like, we in that 400 years, man. They owe us our land. Fact. Like we we they on our land. We we need it back. And this is this is this is the truth about the history. Like our people was here, and we're entitled to what's going on. Like we need our royalties, man. That's all. That's facts. Our reparations. That's what the talk tend to be about, not the reparations. The, like the, the check. All right, so the royalties I'm a, of the land. I'm asking a question that Cole brought up before, and he actually makes a good point. So I wasn't born here. Do I deserve that part of that? Yeah, you from America? It's all America. The islands, just all the same people. Even the Caribbeans and all of that yeah. too. That's all our people. To me, black is black. You know, mm-hmm. and when I say black, I mean melanin. Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, yeah. I like to differentiate. You gotta like understand people, that the land, was all just, about, like, the land was our whole, a whole at once. Facts. You know what I mean? Pangea. Pangea. We the Pangea. oldest thing in this planet. Man. You don't know about Pangea? <laughs> Please don't say that. Oh, no, nah, I do. Never mind. You're the oldest thing on the planet. Facts. Do you feel like... I feel like black people are the only race who are a reflection of nature. Like, literally, we are a reflection of nature. We survive mm-hmm. because nature survives. The only way to literally kill black people is to kill nature, which is why I feel like they're actually doing their best to kill nature. Yeah. 
Because yeah. war on nature is a war on us. He was creating suns. Yo! <laughs> They wilding. You they they, they burning down the, the sun over there? Yeah, for, um, in crazy. China. They it's burning down the groups. Amazon. Burning down the Amazon like yeah, they yeah, fucking that tomorrow. That was bad. That, but, was, that was crazy. And literally, that's like the biggest... And that's where a lot of like... This oxygen comes from. Oxygen. That's our biggest of, source of oxygen. The cleanest waters. Like... But some I, of the craziest herbs that cure right. any disease. Like That's where um I think... Tell me. I think... Sticky tape and sticky glue came from the Amazon. It's because it came from a frog that actually has the ability to stick and unstick from on the tree. So a mm. lot of things that we have in society came because of the Amazon. They, they take they take everything natural and make it artificial. Exactly. Mm -hmm. and, and find different uses to put it in there. They put in a name like That's the one benefit of the capitalism. Names, the names be like super auction and <laughs> over the counter. Like, okay, you take this, this is what's gonna get you. Exactly. Right. And they got a list of fucking side effects. And but it's really just something your, inflammation your body and everything. Yes. You know, you don't know. But most of that time as well too, what they call science is really just holistic healing as well too. Mm -hmm. Because like actually with that being said, like explain um the crystal around your neck. Um for, for the people right watching. Here, this is a left is lazuli. Um it represents, you know, manifesting wisdom. Um, just getting in tune with self, you know. It helps and in, 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 it helps enhance that, you know. Mm. It, you know, just you got to be in tune with the Most High. It's just got to be a righteous, righteous being. Here. And while we're on here, um, how? What's your connection with the Most High? Um, how do you feel you're connected with them? What's your relationship with it? My connection, from what I'm understanding, is you know, you know, um, it's a deep question right there. That I'm still learning right from there. like just all the other like I'm learning from different religions and I mean you know we all grew up Christian, most of us you know. I did, and then. I've been learning more about like you know we got Islam, faiths, Judaism, and all the different Hinduism, faiths. yeah. But like, it all comes to you just having an understanding of the truth, you know, and being in tune with being getting more in tune with nature, you know. Like my first one of my first things that um did on my journey was that I did like a week fast. How was that? What How did you, you feel after? What did you like? Fasting food, salads, yeah. or yeah. just juicing? Just no, no, no food. No food. No, so just, just water. liquid water. Just water for five days or seven days. Seven days. No, my gosh. And then Wednesday to Wednesday. Did you feel a difference in how you was performing? Yeah, and how you were everything reacting? is like. First, like I went through a phase of just learning about like. Just, just eating healthier and like learning about the, how the food is like all of the food is contaminated like most of the food we grew up eating is all contaminated right. it's soul food it's all bad for us like milk so I'm that's like, a big one people yeah, don't yeah, like, they never want to talk about and not and, and i got more in tune with that especially after my grandmother passed you know and um basically i just started learning that like more of the, like the fruits and vegetables is the alkaline based foods that we need to be eating like the natural foods mm, the pH balance doing. but that <clears throat> fucking 7 pH yeah, you gotta get your, your pH not level. 9 not 8 yeah. not 6 not that's 5 that's where all of the like you, you keep yourself on a lower frequency with the food mm -hmm. and then um, just the you know our environment is already crazy just from generational curses and I just learned that a lot of that stuff is what's keeping us at a certain level of thinking and you start getting certain things mm -hmm. start tapping into you, you just think, start thinking negative all the time Facts. just not in the right state of mind you feel me Facts. And <clears throat> with all that you said I just felt like I had to just make a change you know and one one thing I did was started drinking just started drinking water when I was still eating you know meat and stuff like that but did you drink a particular brand like did you stick to a particular brand um I was, know, more so, I was more so like 
because you know we drinking the Poland Spring. Poland Spring is not bad. It's not as bad. It's as not the best either. Yeah, it's not the best. Not the bad. Not that bad. But one I was drinking mostly at the time was uh, the Essential. It's like an IPA. Okay. I don't like that nine pH though. Yeah. To me, that's not balanced. Cause nine is it? That's getting on the is it the acidic or the sour level? But it's not. Cause from me growing, from what I've learned in like biology and growing up before they start re rewording shit and changing different.